Good evening, and welcome in the name of our coming Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This Advent, we are looking at the genealogy of Jesus Christ, an oftentimes overlooked portion of the Bible and of his birth account, but it is an important part of his history, as it shows that from generation to generation, God proclaimed his promise of the Messiah, protected his bloodline, and worked out his plan of salvation that had been set in motion from before the beginning of time. This evening we follow the order of service as printed in the bulletin. We rise to make our beginning. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I see your grace. I bow down toward your holy temple. And give thanks to your name, which is just as well as your For you have exalted above all things on the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul will be increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For praise the glory of the Lord. 
For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. The Lord will fulfill his promise for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Micah, the fifth chapter, beginning at the second verse. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the first chapter. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. The Holy Gospel comes according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about 30 years of age, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Matthias, the son of Simeon, the son of Josek, the son of Jodah, the son of Jonan, the son of Reza, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosum, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonah, the son of Eliakim, the son of Meleah, the son of Mena, the son of Menathai, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salah, the son of Nashan, the son of Aminadab, the son of Admin, the son of Ami, the son of Hezron, the son of of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Sarag, the son of Roy, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Cainin, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Genealogy is the study of ancestry, looking back at the parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on, of somebody. It's tracing someone's roots, finding out where they came from, getting a glimpse of what made them who they are. As you look back over someone's genealogy, you start to see patterns and themes, as well as outliers and anomalies. But in each generation, you see a little bit of what led up to the birth of the person that you're studying. Well, this Advent, we are focusing on the genealogy of Jesus Christ. We are looking at his earthly family tree and seeing what his ancestry says about him. And as we learn about him, we also learn about ourselves. Because God chose to come to this world, to become part of his creation, to take on human flesh and be with us through an earthly family. God could have simply appeared in the flesh. He's God, he can do anything. But instead, he was born into a specific family with a specific past and a specific genealogy coming to us through generation after generation of specific ancestors. Now, if you've ever spoken with a genealogist about their family tree, you know two things for sure. Number one, you're going to be there for a little while. Number two, they are going to tell you that you should be impressed. They are going to pull out the big guns. They are going to make sure that you see the highlights, the best of the best, or sometimes even the worst of the worst. Most genealogists want to share with you the most impressive people of their bloodline. They want you to know that they have someone very, very special in their ancestry. Someone really good, like royalty, or a brave soldier in a war, or someone who made a big impact on their community. Or maybe even someone just really notorious, like a betrayer, or someone who was tried as a witch, or the guy who accidentally burned down the family business. Those are the highlights. Those are the things that genealogists crave, something big and meaty and juicy. Genealogies are usually about the big names, the names that you are going to recognize and remember and that you are going to want to tell other people about and say, can you believe what this guy's great, great, great grand cousin did? And in Jesus' genealogy, we certainly have some big names. We have lots of giants of the faith. We have King David and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Noah, and Adam. Names that are very well known from the Bible. Important men of faith. And we see them in the genealogy and we say, of course they should be there. Because they're good. They're good men of faith. They knew the word of God and they kept it. But we also have some pretty notorious scoundrels in there too. We have wicked kings who led Israel into idolatry and depravity. We have men who are liars and thieves, men who committed rape and incest and murder. I mean, when you look at it, Jesus' family tree is pretty shady in some places. But most of Jesus' family tree is just guys. Guys that we don't know a whole lot about. Men who we don't have much of a record of. A list of names that's hard for us to pronounce and even harder for us to care about. Names that just don't stick with us, that don't bring up any images of good or bad, just a whole bunch of names. Take, for instance, our subject tonight, Shealtiel. His is probably not a name that you're familiar with. So let me make like a good genealogist here and tell you a little bit about him. He was really well known for, uh, and then there was that time when he, hmm, ah, uh, but who could forget about, nah, I got nothing. Seriously, we know next to nothing about Shealtiel. This is the only place that he's really mentioned 
other than in the Old Testament as the father of Zerubbabel. We know more about his son Zerubbabel, who played a very key role in rebuilding Jerusalem and the temple when the exiles returned from Babylon. But if your claim to fame is, I'm the dad of a guy who some people might have heard of, let's face it, that's kind of lame. He was known by his family and friends, obviously, but after a couple of generations, Sheltiel just pretty much became an anonymous twig in the family tree, a name that you kind of gloss over, that you ignore so that you can get back to the good ancestors, the exciting ones, the ones that actually matter. But the fact is, even if we don't know anything about Sheltiel, even if we don't remember him, he definitely mattered. He is an essential link in Jesus' earthly bloodline. Without Shealtiel, there would have been no Jesus. The chain would have been broken, the family tree would have been pruned, and the Messiah would not have been born among us. And even if we don't know his name, even if we don't remember him, God did. And God still does. From before time began, God knew who Shealtiel was and that he would be a part of the Messianic bloodline. God carefully watched over every one of the names in that genealogy, good, bad, and mundane, to ensure that his eternal plan of salvation took place exactly as he desired, exactly as he had laid it out from before the foundation of the world. During his life, God spoke his word to Shealtiel. He repeated the promise of the Messiah to him. He assured him of his love for his people. And God graciously chose to join Shealtiel in his history and his flesh, to take on Shealtiel's sin, to save him from sin, death, and the devil. Nobody else might remember the guy, but God does. And God did a lot for him. And he's done the same for you as well. Because let's face it, most of us are not well known outside of our immediate family and friends. Most of us are not celebrities, internationally renowned authors or athletes, people whose name is recognizable and familiar to the world. Let's face it, if you put your name out there on the internet, most people are going to go, who? The fact is, while our families and our friends know us and love us, most of us are going to be genealogical footnotes in a couple of generations. Anonymous names that people gloss over to get to the good stuff. Most of us are the Shealtiels of the world. Just plain, ordinary folk who aren't making a lasting impression on the worldwide scene. But while the world might not know us right now, might not remember us in a few years, God does. Just like Shealtiel, to you, God has repeated his gracious and eternal promises of the Messiah. While the world might not know who you are, God knew you from before you were born. He chose to be a part of your family. He loved you enough to give up absolutely everything so that you could be with him forever. The world might not care who you are, but God cares so much that he sacrificed everything. That's what we see when we look to the manger of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's not just a cute baby to remind you to pretend you like your co-workers and give money to the Salvation Army. This is Emmanuel, God with us. God, the creator and ruler of all things, who humbled himself to come to us in the flesh, to become a part of his own creation through a bloodline. And he came not just to save a handful of really good, really well-known people. He came for all of us. The Abrahams, the Shealtiels, the Dans, the Amys, all of us. We are loved by God so much that he took on human flesh for us. And he didn't just get born to be cute and set a good example for us. He was born 
so that he could die in our place. That's why he had to take on that human bloodline, to truly be one of us, to truly stand in our place beneath his own holy law. That's what Christmas is about. That's why we celebrate. That's why we exchange gifts and rejoice. Our Savior came to sacrifice everything on our behalf so that we could be cleansed of our sin. God, who had no reason whatsoever, no obligation to look on us with anything other than wrath and fury, looked on us in mercy and love and chose to save us by giving up everything. That tiny baby that we so eagerly await to celebrate his birth, he was born to suffer and die in your place, to pay the full price of your sin, to rise again from the tomb for you. Whether you are famous or not, whether people talk about you for hundreds of years or forget about you as soon as you're gone, Jesus Christ was born for you. He loved you personally so much that he gave up everything just so you could be with him in heaven. You are a part of his family. As he willingly, graciously took on human flesh, joined you in the waters of baptism, and paid with his life to adopt you as his beloved child. No matter what the world might think, you are his precious possession, his pride and joy, a valued and loved member of his family. You are why Jesus was born. And because he was, because he suffered on the cross for you, because he has risen from the dead for you, you are forgiven of every one of your sins, and eternal life in heaven is yours. To God alone be all glory, now and forever. Amen. And now that peace of God which surpasses all understanding. <coughs> Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. 
And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. May be seated for our closing hymn. Again, welcome to all of you, and what a joy it is to gather together in God's presence and to know that though the world may think nothing at all of us, our Lord thinks the world of us, gave up everything for us to be with him, has cleansed us of our sin and given us the guarantee of everlasting life in heaven with him. God's richest blessings to each and every one of you on the rest of your week, and may he bring you back safely to his holy house in the days and weeks to come. <laughs>